So the price of Ether is breaking out recently, and I'm super excited as an Ethereum investor. ETH 2.0 is well on its way with the Beacon Chain launch in late 2020. If you remember, 32 ETH is needed to stake or validate in the ETH 2.0 network. Essentially, we can be the miners and earn ETH as rewards for helping secure the network. I want to tell you all about the validators process and what you need to know if you want to become one. So if you're an ETH investor, you should definitely watch this video whether you want to validate or not because it's going to affect the entire network in the future. So sit back, relax, and just keep on watching. Welcome back to Bitcoin for Beginners. I'm your host, Kevin, and in this channel, we're all about deep research and honest opinions with no frills nor fluffs. If you're tired of seeing other YouTubers shill the same projects over and over, come join our family instead. Now, as always, my content may be a little bit long, but I'm going to leave timestamps down below so you can skip ahead if you'd like. And if you watch this, you're like, hey, this is pretty interesting and valuable, then please just give me a quick thumbs up and that would help us out immensely. Now let's go. So I'm not going to recap the whole ETH 2.0 project and process because I did that already in a previous video that you should check out if you haven't. But essentially, it's a huge upgrade to the blockchain network, and it's going to make it faster, more scalable, more secure, and many other improvements. It's a multi-year process, though, and it's already begun with phase zero, the beacon chain officially launched. One big aspect of it is that it's going to move from proof of work over to proof of stake. So instead of having these hardware devices spend electricity to mine for ETH, you can stake your coins just using a laptop or some virtual private server, for example, and you can earn ETH periodically for helping validate, add blocks, and secure the network. That's why we're so excited because it, even guppies like me can participate now instead of just buying and holding and just like, what's next? So in terms of validators and the whole validation process, a validator is a virtual hardware device that helps maintain the blockchain consensus of the Ethereum 2.0 network. Essentially, as a validator, you propose and vouch for new blocks to be added to the blockchain. And a block, if you don't remember, is just a bundle of transactions, whether that's you sending to someone else or interacting with a smart contract like a decentralized exchange or crypto kitties or NFTs, etc. The more votes a block receives, the more likely it's going to be accepted. And that's when you get your mining reward per se, when your block gets accepted. There's also other incentives and rewards and penalties to help the network reach general consensus and stay in general consensus because that's the whole point of this distributed decentralized blockchain network so that everyone can reach consensus even though they potentially receive different blocks and use different clients and so forth. So a little bit more about the Beacon Chain because that's the very important blockchain of the ETH 2.0 architecture. It was launched in December 2020 and it coordinates everything. People call it the heartbeat of ETH 2.0 and you can really think about it in that way as well. Essentially, it does a lot of things like manage active validators, selects proposers, organize committees, maintains penalties and rewards, coordinates shards, and provisions randomness. In terms of the Beacon Chain, every 12 seconds there is a slot which is pretty much like a block. You can think of it in that way. And an epoch or epic is 32 slots, about 6.4 minutes. A slot is a chance for a block to be added to a blockchain. And a block proposer is a validator who's selected to build a block from transactions out there in the broader unconfirmed pool per se. And this is pseudo random. It's not truly random because if you personally stake more ETH and have more validator nodes running, then you'll be much more likely to be chosen. And then attesters are, if validators aren't proposers, then they can just vote on the blocks that are out there to see whether or not they are valid. There's also rewards for reporting bad actors, like if people are using their clients to put out conflicting votes, proposing multiple blocks, or other activities that's not good for reaching and maintaining consensus, those can be penalized and you get rewarded if you help report them. So what are the requirements for being a validator? First, a long-term commitment, at least two years, most likely. You have to stake 32 ETH for that amount of time and you can't withdraw until at least phase 1.5. Can't withdraw at all, so just know that. It's stuck there until the next phase. You also need to maintain your validator node 24-7, 365 days a year with either a computer like a laptop at home 
or a virtual private server or VPS in the cloud. There are some recommended minimum hardware though, 64-bit Windows, Mac, or Linux, decent CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, an SSD of over 28 gigabytes, and definitely a stable internet and power connection. You also definitely need to know the risks and responsibilities involved for being a validator because it's a big responsibility. So what do you actually need to download if you want to be one, right? You need first an ETH 1.0 client, and there's a few to choose from like Nethermind, Open Ethereum, and so forth. But as you may have heard before, if you've been around the Ethereum space, running a full node is not the easiest though, because you have to store the entire historical blockchain and validate all of it. So it takes a long time and a disk space too. So you could use something like Infura.io's endpoint instead that manages and abstracts that for you, but that's less decentralization for the whole network. Now, you also need an ETH 2.0 client, and that's for the actual active validation process. And for that, there's also four options like Nimbus, Prism, Lighthouse, and so forth. There's also the deposit smart contract that you need to stake with and send your ETH there in order to be a validator. And this kind of serves as the bridge between ETH 1 and ETH 2. There's also a key store which holds your keys that controls your validator node, lets you do signatures, deposits, withdrawals, and so forth. Now, what is the step-by-step -step initial process, right? First, you need to stake 32 ETH or multiples of it. And I highly recommend you to use the Ethereum Foundation's ETH2 Launchpad. This is the all-in-one interface to get started. And the steps are as follows. One, choose an ETH1 client and set it up. Step two, choose an ETH2 client and set that up. Step three, generate keys for validation. You can either do that by their CLI app or build from source. And what that will give you is a signing key, which is mnemonic or password protected per se, and public keys in a JSON file. And then in the next step, you upload that data file onto the Launchpad page. And then the next step, connect your Web3 Ethereum wallet to the Launchpad so you can deposit. And then step six, view overall summary and hit the confirm button to initiate the deposit. That's it. And they have a lot of instructions, very crystal clear instructions for each of these steps in case you get confused and need more guidance of what's supported and how to do it properly. And just a quick shout out from our patrons, crypto.com. Two things I want to note. One is that they also have validators going on in which you can similarly stake CRO and get rewards with their testnet and mainnet. And they've enlisted Bison Trails to host the validator node infrastructure. And another interesting thing that is relevant for our channel is they've added Graph Protocol, GRT, and Filecoin, FIL, to trade on their exchange in their app. And I mentioned that because we're going to cover those projects in future videos in the month of January too. So stay tuned. So after you do that step-by-step -step process, what happens next, right? You have to wait for the transaction to be confirmed, but after that, you're placed in a queue to be approved by the beacon chain. And the beacon chain processes roughly 900 validators a day, and that's four new validators per epic, so 900 daily. Currently, that results to over one week of wait time since there's a lot of people in the queue. You also need to set up your ETH2 client in order to actively validate, but you can only start validating after your deposit contract is approved. Now, what are the rewards and penalties? Because these are both hugely important, right? You can earn returns and get around 7 to 10% annual interest. And there's some online calculators I recommend you take a look at for estimating the rewards. In terms of penalties, there's something called slashing. Essentially, the network makes you burn a large part of your stake if you misbehave and vote intentionally against consensus. There's also inactivity leak, and that is you lose part of your deposit if you're online to encourage network uptime. And the amount you lose and the rate that you lose it depends on if blocks are finalizing or not. If it is finalizing, you don't lose that much. But if it's not finalizing, then they want to severely punish to prevent that scenario from happening. So if like 33% of validators are offline, you get a hefty punishment if you're among that group that's offline. And that means 60% loss of your stake within 18 days. That's real fast. So you have to get it online and operational ASAP. And if your stake ever drops below 16 ETH, they will auto kick you out of the network. And the beacon chain handles rewards and penalties at the end of each epic or 6.5 minutes. Now, what are some risks involved with being a validator? First, hardware and software issues like a hardware failure of your laptop per se or your server or software bugs, and that can cause slashing. There's less risks on supported clients 
for software bugs because they've been tested so far. Also outages like internet and power outages makes it risky to stake if these are not consistent and reliable for you. This can also lead to more losses than earnings if you have a lot of these issues. These risks are important to keep in mind and also look further yourself if you are committed to being a full validator and earning rewards while improving the ETH network. Now you may be wondering why validate, right? Ultimately, you want to help your network increase decentralization because that's something that we don't want in the crypto space and for each project. There is a test net. It's called Piermont. You can use the launch pad for that too to test it out. And you can go through very similar steps as I just outlined for the real beacon chain. You may be wondering why stake early as well, right? It doesn't benefit the network currently per se because it hasn't rolled out the next steps to actually move transactions onto the ETH2 network, but you can't earn more of real ETH since there's less stake currently. There's also no need for an ETH1 client anymore after phase 1.5 rolls around. And you can also track your rewards if you're participating in this with Beacon Chain Explorers or set up your own local dashboards with various supported clients. Now you may be like, wow, this is freaking complicated and a hassle. And you would be right if you think this is too much for you, but you still want to stake your ETH because it's fun because you have over 32, or even if you have less than 32, you can use a staking pool, maybe another video on this channel. Let me know if you want to see that. You can use the validator as a service or even exchanges are offered staking as a service. They do all the setup and management for you and they take a cut of the rewards, but using those can have other vulnerabilities too, like if they get hacked or if it's a malicious pool, whatever, right? So you got to do your due diligence for those as well. So what are my final thoughts? I do want to get my 32 ETH and stake them. I probably would use some exchange or service option though, because it's easier, but also I'm not quite sure about staking it for that long because we don't know how long it's going to take to roll out that step. It could be delayed as well. Maybe we want to swing trader ETH between all coins or Bitcoin, for example. There are a lot of people participating though, so that's great for the future of the network and community participation is always healthy. Let me know if you're going to participate or have you already. Also, let me know what topic you want me to dive into next in the Bitcoin, crypto, and blockchain space. I'll definitely take a look and schedule it if I think it's interesting as well. I hope you have a great day. I'm Kevin, and I'll catch y'all next time.